Yep. This is the uh, laser spectroscopy laboratory in the Department of Physics and Astronomy at Howard University. I'm Prabhakar Misra, professor of physics and currently the interim chair of the department. We study a variety of molecules, so both free radicals and stable molecules, in an effort to characterize plasma physics, atmospheric phenomena, and also environmental processes. For example, in this vacuum chamber here, we're able to produce a very high vacuum and are able to generate free radicals by using lasers and discharge techniques. For example, in the uh, chamber layout here, we have an excimer laser coming in and photo dissociating the precursors into a free radical and other fragments. And then we have a second laser, a YAG pump tunable dye laser, which goes into the chamber through this window. And the way we probe the molecules is by producing uh, an ultraviolet radiation by using an auto tracker, which frequency doubles the wavelength coming out of the dye laser. For example, if we have a red dye, say for example, currently it has a red dye in the dye laser, then you have about 600 nanometer radiation coming out of the dye laser, which gets frequency doubled or halved in wavelength to about 300 nanometers in the ultraviolet. And many of the electronic transitions in, say, organic molecules or moderately sized molecules are driven at ultraviolet wavelengths. And so then we are able to excite those molecules into higher electronic states, and as they uh, de-excite, they produce fluorescence, which is known as laser-induced fluorescence. And that laser-induced fluorescence is collected by detectors like photomultiplier tubes and CCDs, and then they are saved on hard drives and using the computers and software, we are able to process the data and produce a spectrum. Now over the years, we've had about 30 students pass through this lab. There have been 10 PhD students who have completed their dissertation and about 15 undergraduate students who have done research in this lab and five postdoctoral fellows. Now, today I have with me three of my current uh, graduate students and undergraduate students here. Raul Garcia Sanchez, he is a fifth year graduate student who has been working on the Mars project, the Curiosity rover landed on Mars on August 6, 2012, and he has built an organic database and library so that when the data gets beamed back from Mars and cross-checked, in the lab, you want to make sure that the terrestrial contaminants are not present in the Mars data. And I'll have Raul speak to that for a few minutes. So as Dr. Mistra said, we developed a library to ensure that we don't have terrestrial background from Earth in our Mars samples. And the way we do that is by, as you can see by this rover, this rover is obviously composed of different materials. So what we do is we have different samples of the rover materials and we utilize a technique called gas chromatography mass spectro uh, spe spectrometry and with that we're able to determine the chemical signature of those materials when they heat up which is a key technique since the sample analysis on Mars which should be somewhere around here in the rover uh, heats up the, the, the soil samples so it's important to make sure that when that heating occurs, we're not also uh, receiving some trace materials from, from rover materials. And my thesis work is on metal oxide gas sensing. And the goal of that is we, given a sample, for example, tungsten oxide, and then we have a gas, NO2. Can we determine from that interaction and utilizing Raman spectroscopy and computer simulations can we develop a model which will allow us to pre predict for a given X metal oxide what its interaction with Y gas is? Now besides Raul, I have Janelle Holmes here who is a freshman physics major and she's been characterizing carbon nanotubes using Raman spectroscopy and related techniques. Janelle? Um, yeah, last semester when I started working in Dr. 
Romans through his spectroscopy lab. I worked on using Roman spectroscopy to um, run spectra of a bundle of carbon nanotubes in order to find measurements that helped me predi to predict um, the structure of the carbon nanotube. This semester, I have been working with um, tungsten oxide, trying to map the exact position of the tungsten oxide on a substrate. Now, besides uh, Janelle and Raoul's work, I have here Daniel Casimir, who is an advanced graduate student in physics who is uh, almost finishing his PhD dissertation. And Daniel is going to talk about some of the modeling and simulation work that he's been doing with uh, carbon nanotubes. So my research is on carbon nanotubes, especially um, looking at their thermal elastic properties. And uh, what carbon nanotubes are small, cylindrically rolled um, tubules of carbon items. And I've been using um, Raman spectroscopy and molecular dynamics simulation to look at these properties, where Raman spectroscopy is just basically shining light on the sample and looking at its vibrational response to, tell, to identify the type of material. And the reason I'm looking at the thermal elastic properties of this material is um, this is now offering a new way to look at the thermodynamics of low dimensional physical objects, which was um, previously unavailable in the last 20 years since these materials were recently discovered. And of the recent discoveries, uh, the recent Nobel Prize in Physics for the, uh, for the new material called graphene has a lot of implications for the semiconductor industry. Some people are talking about uh, silicon uh, being replaced by a viable graphene alternative. This wedding or marriage between spectroscopy and nanophysics has a wide range of applications in not only physics, chemistry, and biology, but also other industries like the pharmaceutical industry, in biomedicine, and even in uh, engineering fields. Thank you very much.